News Talk 1280 KIT. Good morning. It's Dave. It's, it's Jackson. It's, 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 you're not Lance. No. You're Richard Miller. Filling Lance in. is not here. Lance is not here. I hope he's having fun wherever he is, getting some R&R. Looking for snow, no doubt, but I think he's uh, I think he's in Portland, just poking around, having some fun, enjoying the great Northwest and the Portlandia experience. Here we go. Uh, this is from Livability.com. It says the the headline is Seven Cities Will Actually Pay You to Move There." Mm, how much? I, I haven't read the details here. Vermont is willing to pay any residents up to ten thousand dollars towards moving expenses, a computer, and a workspace. Isn't it Bernie Sanders the Vermont? Senator, uh, I think so. Ten grand if you if you operate a uh, take that off the list. Just saying, <clears throat> if you operate one of those um, remote businesses where you're working from home, mm-hmm. uh, Marn or Marnie, Iowa, does something like that. New Haven, Connecticut, Baltimore. I wouldn't go to Baltimore for nothing. Harmony, Minnesota, they'll pay you up to twelve grand if you decide to build a house there. How about that? Hamilton, Ohio. Hmm, Hamilton, Ohio. My sister lives in Hamilton, one of my sisters. The city is trying to change that. Uh, the residents don't have college degrees by offering up to $5,000 to new residents who have student loans. Do you know, uh, uh, are you uh, familiar with the book Hillbilly Elegy? I have heard of it, not read it. Yeah, written about the an area around Hamilton, Ohio, Ohio called Middleton. Yeah. yeah, not too far from there. That's, yeah. uh, you guys are like knee deep in opioids, aren't you? Say that again. I said, you folks, and I say you because I see your Cleveland Brown smile. Uh, you guys are knee deep in opioids in that part of the world. Well, in that part of the world. Now, now, just, just, you know, just to clarify, that that would be Southern Ohio. Okay, I'm I'm from Northern Ohio. Oh, so you look down on that. I'm a Cleveland fan. Those folks from Hamilton are. Bengals fans. So you right. look so down on clear. them then. Okay. So, okay, we're clear. I have you. I got it. All right. Uh, interesting. 843 and a sunny day today. Got a few clouds right now, but sunshine in the forecast and 101 degrees. Our political conversation continues this morning. Uh, it is a busy field uh, of politician wannabes this year uh, in all kinds of races. Our state races, local races. Uh, this is not a city council year, but... Um, this county commissioners and sheriffs and uh, undertakers, you name it, um, and state representatives. And uh, we have in the studio this morning A.J. Cooper, who says she prefers the Democrat Party, and she is uh, running to uh, to take on the part the uh, incumbent Dave Taylor. Now you heard from Mario Martinez a few minutes ago, uh, so now it's A.J.'s turn to. Come to the hot seat and to face the... No, just to sit in and have a chat. Let us help uh, you get to know her a little bit. And uh, and we'll chat again later on should she win the primary. AJ, good morning. Good to see you. Hello, good just, morning. Good, just drag that microphone right over to you there and get comfy. <laughs> um, so uh, let's chit-chat, um, find out a little bit about you. Give us uh, a bit of the old background, the general who, what, when, where, why, the family, the job, the, that kind of stuff. Well, my name is AJ Cooper, and I'm running for state representative in the Legislative District 15, seat number two. And I am a mother of two children, and I'm also a part time fitness instructor in health and well being. I work with seniors, mental cognitive. It kind of fulfills that teaching desire that I have. Mm-hmm. Prior to being a mother, I was a high school math teacher, and I worked for a little bit in the community college as an algebra teacher there. And prior to becoming a mother, I was also working on a master's in math, which kind of gave me a little a little interesting way of thinking. I had to think abstractly and follow the rules at the same time. Oh, That's, uh, <laughs> both of those are tough for Richard and mine. He's, he's tough to follow the rules, and I have a tough time thinking abstractly. I, I was told there would be no be math. Be no math, yeah, exactly. Uh, There's a test at the end. People are screaming at their radios, AJ Cooper, is she related to D.B. Cooper? I wish I'd have some money, right? <laughs> but no relation. That you no know relation. Of, right? Okay. Uh, where are you from originally? I um, grew up in Virginia. Spent most of my time in Virginia. I've actually lived in Penn State's over my lifetime. Uh-huh. I moved here from California about six years ago. Well, good that you got out of there in one. Place, right? <laughs> Welcome to Washington. Uh, okay, so have you ever held any kind of uh, elected office before? Ever done this sort of thing? Um, not at the state level. I am the chair of the 15th legislative district um, 
15th Com Central Community Committee, and I'm also the Eastern Vice Chair of the Ag and Rural Democratic um, Caucus, okay. and I was elected to those positions. Okay. Um, a lot of people would say, you know, this has been um, Republican country for a long time, but other people would say that doesn't give us much uh, of a seat at the table um, on when you get over to Olympia, especially in the last couple of years. Um, what do you see coming out of a uh, the 15th district? If I recall, it was rearranged to be a minority majority district a few mm -hmm. years back, mm -hmm. and that hasn't exactly worked out. Um, any t thoughts on why that might be? Well, you know, I I think yeah we are going to have a census coming up, which is one of the reasons why this this election is so important. Um, and that is something that I've been looking at. You know, we have the the confederated tribes and bands of the Yakima Nation, and they have been divided in half. We have also have the Colville Tribe Nation, which has also been divided, I want to say, four different. Um, so we kind of were dividing our communities to kind of lessen their power. Um, we also need to, I feel, find a way that it doesn't benefit the Democrats or the Republicans, there needs to be a fair way to make these divisions. Okay. Um, what? Uh, how do you? How do you give a grade to the current legislature? Have you paid? Uh, I know some people like are total political junkies, and that's why they decide to jump in. Other people are motivated by something more um, less chronic and more acute that makes them decide. Okay, that's it. I'm going. Uh, what is it that uh, motivates you to take a jump at this point? Well, I've always been um, very politically opinionated. I've always told myself, and I'm really sure I ever saw myself as a um, as a political official, especially since, you know, the word politician kind of puts a nasty taste in my mouth. Um, but I think that's kind of, that has to change. Um, you know, we've been, you know, for me, I'm what you see is what you get. I'm not going to hide behind Democratic rhetoric or Republican rhetoric. A lot of the issues that we have going forward are honestly not partisan issues. Um, and so I think we kind of need to take the right or wrong out of some of these issues and start looking at, you know, who's benefiting through these but from these legislations. Um, you know, so we need to take a look and start thinking logically and practically about them. Okay. Richard? AJ, you mentioned in your interview with the Herald that you would, you feel our tax system here in Washington State needs to re, be revamped top to bottom. Yes. What do you mean by that? What would you do differently? Well, we need to start taking Washington's tax dollars and start investing them back into Washington so that they will come back to us. You know, I, I think we need to be investing in our small farmers. Right now, our small, small farmers are feeling this need to run off or sell their, their farmlands to, you know, put solar power. And I'm all about investing in solar power. Don't get me wrong. But I'm also about protecting our farmlands and our smaller farmers. We also need to be investing in our small businesses. I say, hey, give them some tax incentives. If they're willing to hire people for more than minimum wage, that money's going to come back to us. Um, I also feel that we need to... Um, kind of invest in new infrastructure you know if living in the valley you know water is a big a big issue and we have a you know our ag industry here you know and again you know we have large business businesses our smaller businesses smaller farmers are getting swallowed up by our larger ones and we need both we need that um, robust competition and I feel like we're kind of favoring one side more than the other one of the things that you mentioned uh, in some of the material that we were looking at AJ is that uh, you're, uh, you have a real interest in protecting the environment. That you yes. Have, uh, strong feelings there. Uh, so where does that put you um, on the governor's carbon tax or a carbon tax kind of idea? I've, I've signed the initiative. Um, I honestly am, you know, because something needs to be done. Um, you know, pollution fee, carbon tax. Am I 100% sure this is the way we're supposed to go? No, this is something that I would also like to see those those tax breaks. Like if our government have been stepping forward ahead of time. So right now we are in emergency and crisis mode, which is expensive. 
And it's something that Washington State and the United States does. We ignore issues. And so we end up having to spend our money in emergency and crisis rather than prevention. I would like to see us rewarding companies that are working best practices and working towards that zero carbon footprint. Um, so I would, I, I would like to see something more of a reward system. And I also would like to see something with our government doing prevention and maintenance, working on that infrastructure for, you know, our water, water conservation, working on fewer pesticides, working on our, you know, our contaminated wells here in the Yakima Valley. You know, we have 20% of our, wells that are contaminated with nitrates you know we've been waiting for six years for a plan you know there's a group that's been working on it they were supposed to be done by the end of june now we're going to have to wait till the end of year the year um you know and these are these shallow aquifers that do replenish they're the ones that replenish themselves Hmm. and if they're replenishing themselves with polluted water we're not going to be able to drink them aj you're a former teacher so I'm sure you have an opinion about McCleary. What makes teachers happy? What would <laughs> make them happy? Well, fair wages does help. Don't get me wrong. Um, but also support, mentorship. I mean, you know, teachers, nurses, like a lot of these, you know, very noble um, professions are really looked looked down upon and are negative, which is one of the reasons why they don't get paid. And they're also, you know, the business that they don't always do just for money. Um, And right now we do have teachers doing jobs above and beyond what they're really should be doing. They should be focusing on teaching. You know, we actually talked about this the last time with the, um, you know, the special education teachers. They're, they're not only special education teachers. They also have to be case managers, you know, I can't understand why we don't have case managers and so that the special education teachers can focus on teaching. You know, we also have teachers that have to be, they have to be hall monitors. They also have to kind of be the security of the school. I'm not quite sure why we don't have, you know, groups of people in the school monitoring the halls. You know, we have issues of bullying that's just being overlooked and maybe it's just not being seen. There aren't people there. You know, we need to be, we need to have, people watching and looking i mean that's the biggest thing and monitoring those social medias you know having the connection i would also like to see not only guidance counselors but also therapists in the schools i mean depression and anxiety you know they're noticing is starting at as early as the age of 11 and you know Guidance, you know, being a guidance counselor, I know they have to, you know, do that, walk that line of being a guidance counselor and a therapist, but wouldn't it be great if we could have both? And that way the guidance counselors could help them work through the the job of being a student and the path that they need to take, whether they're going to go into an apprenticeship or whether or not they're going to go at, to a university or, you know, so that they're better prepared when they do leave school. Talking about uh, um, therapists in school, what have you, Leads us to the conversation about mental health in general. Yes. Um, and some of the other folks that we've talked to this morning have all uh, more or less mentioned uh, mental health issues in Washington State as uh, needing some attention. Do you have any particular thoughts on that? Uh, again, you know, it's this mentality of working at that emergency and crisis phase, which, you know, we pour a lot of money into emergency and crisis, but that doesn't do anything to actually help prevent um, mental health. You know, again, having those therapists in the school starting, finding it earlier on um, when, you know, students and, you know, are much more able to start to kind of mold themselves and to start learning those those coping or figuring out what works best for them. Um, You know, so right now it's been ignored for a long time so now we it's kind of got grown to a point where it's exploded and we're going to have to do both we're going to have to invest in prevention maintenance and we're also going to have to invest in that in that uh emergency and crisis because we need to help those that are out there that are struggling trying to find the help and unfortunately you know i know yakima has some programs but we are a little isolated you know and we need you know 
we need more help and i would love to see actually a federal and state partnership because it needs to all come together you know kind of i feel like that you know the mr yuck sticker the poison control i would like to see something like that with with mental health one number that is nationwide that everyone knows they can call and get connected to the right people more community groups you know and not just you know paid community groups you know having volunteer community groups also if we can band together and create a supportive foundation i feel we would have a much better outcome you know aj that did you know that dave was the model for mr yuck That's right. <laughs> I, I, was, I can see the resemblance a couple of years ago and uh, it was shortly after i was having some appendix issues and so the green was <laughs> the just green. a natural extension of how i was feeling at the time yeah. Shut up, Richard. All right. What about uh, what's the legislature doing right? Is there anything that's right coming out of Olympia, in your opinion, that things are doing well? Well, I, I, the voter, um, you know, trying to enroll more voters and make it easier. I think that's great. The, the um, paid stamp on the uh, ballot is fantastic. I'm hoping that that helps with voter turnout. Um, that is definitely something that we're also going to be, to be focusing on ourselves. All right, so here you are, stuck in an elevator with Dave and Richard, Mr. Yuck and Mr. Lame, um, and we're saying, hey, aren't you running, uh, AJ, for office? Give us the 30-second uh, uh, pitch as to why we should vote for you. You would say what? <laughs> well, I would say... Um, please I, open the door. Yeah, yeah. please, yes, yeah, yes, get me so, out of here. No. 911. <laughs> no, I, um, I... No, actually, this is what I... I enjoy. I know that politically we probably do not see eye to eye, but um, but that's where I need to be as a elected official. I would need to find myself in situations. I need to be able to find those other viewpoints because, of course, you know, I do have my own ideas. And when it comes to being a lawmaker, I kind of have to put those aside and say my emotional feelings, my personal feelings need to be set aside. I need to look at the facts. I need to look at what other people are saying. I'm one of those people that I walk into a room. I don't sit at a table with people I know because I know what they think. I sit at a table with the people that I don't know because that's how I find my knowledge. That's how I find those other viewpoints. And I, you know, and if you tell me something that contradicts what I believe, that doesn't mean that I'm going to dismiss it. I'm going to go out there and find those truths and maybe have to adjust my viewpoint. While you, uh, find a way to meet new people. Some new people hopefully have met you today. <laughs>